One of YouTube's most beloved creators has become their most hated overnight. And after just a few short weeks, the situation has sparked hours of content with millions of views that will likely end up being played on a courtroom floor. Not to mention almost a million dollars in charitable donations that went missing over the past decade. So what exactly happened? Well, this whole situation centers around Gerard Khalil, best known for his long running series as The Completionist, where he aims to do and see everything that a game has to offer, even after the credits roll. And throughout his career, Gerard has maintained a wholesome and positive persona that has gained him quite a strong reputation. For example, Gerard was largely known for using his platform in support of various causes that often go overlooked. This includes gaming preservation. I bought every Nintendo 3DS and Wii U game on the eShop. It cost far too much time and way too much money, but it was absolutely worth it for the sake of game preservation. Supporting indie game studios. We've got more than 45 indie games to showcase this year, and their developers will be joining us virtually or in person, which is always such an honor. But most importantly, dementia. You can expect game key giveaways, waxings, and a whole host of new incentives to drive donations all in the name of dementia research. See, dementia is a cause that hits very close to home for Gerard, as his mother began showing symptoms when he was just 10 years old and was officially diagnosed four years later with frontotemporal dementia. She fought this disease for 15 years before passing away when Gerard was just 25. And from how he speaks about this, it's clear how fundamental this experience was in shaping Gerard. My mom's battle with this disease lasted nearly 15 years. And after experiencing the struggles and hardships of caring for someone with dementia, we decided to start a foundation in her honor. Inspired by this experience, Gerard and his family committed to supporting various efforts to combat this disease. This started with actually donating part of his mother's remains to dementia research. When my mother passed away in 2013, we donated her brain and spinal cord to the same academics and doctors we worked with to further advance their research. And ultimately resulted in the formation of the Open Hand Foundation, a charity that would raise over half a million dollars in donations towards dementia research and care, largely thanks to two annual events, a golfing tournament held by Gerard's father and Gerard's own event, IndieLand. Now, IndieLand is meant to support two causes that are dear to Gerard. The first is promoting indie games, a genre that often struggles with marketing due to a lack of funds. But secondly is charity, this event was ultimately a fundraiser where every penny raised was pledged towards dementia research and care. All the money goes to the Open Hand Foundation, an organization that we started in honor of my mom, and all that money goes to dementia research. We don't touch any of it, we just work with the people who do need the money, and we help them do their thing. Simply put, it's a brilliant concept for an event, which is why over the last six years, IndieLand became quite the success. With guests like Dropout's Brennan Lee Mulligan, streamer and host Trisha Hirschberger, and even award-winning actress Jamie Lee Curtis. And it's unquestionably an incredible legacy for Gerard to leave behind in honor of his mother. So what's the problem? Well, it all starts with Mudahar, aka Some Ordinary Gamers, and Carl Jobs, which already might sound strange, as Mudahar is best known for his gaming commentary and Carl for speedrunning content. So what do they have to do with Gerard. Well, on November 13th, the two creators each posted a video revealing that they had launched an investigation into the Open Hand Foundation, an investigation that led to several troubling discoveries. Namely, the fact that while the Open Hand Foundation had raised over $600,000 in donations for the fight against dementia, none of it was ever actually donated. This was based on publicly available IRS filings, which showed a consistently rising amount of donations that the organization was keeping on hand, but no money being actually spent beyond operating expenses. How much did they spend? in contributions paid, zero dollars. And of course, you can see that at the beginning of the year, they had $66,000 that they started off with and $94,000 in the bank. Where the last year, 2022 of their filings, they make $117,000. Then they somehow spend $11,000, but still contribute $0 at all. But the point is, this is still money that's sitting in their account. Which essentially means that the organization had been hoarding the money it had raised and was only spending enough to run their events. Problem is, this was not being made clear to the people donating at all. In fact, Gerard's language was consistently suggesting that the money was being donated each year. We're raising money for dementia research in honor of my late mom, trying to help folks who've been impacted by dementia, Working with organizations like USF, uh, uh, F FTD Association of America, uh, Alzheimer's Association of America, and so many more. Now, right off the bat, there's a huge problem with this money sitting in an account for so long. And it's that word we can't stop hearing over the last couple of years. Inflation. Money loses value over time. An easy example is that while one's weekly grocery trip may have been $90 a few years ago, they may find themselves now spending $130 for the same amount of food. So regardless of any foul play, there was harm done as a result of this, because the money being donated would have been able to fund more dementia 
research had it been donated as it was received. For example, the donations received in 2014 have since lost over 20% of their value. That's not exactly a small amount. But regardless of how this investigation started, it became personal rather quickly. Mudahar played clips from a call he had with the completionist where Gerard had what I would call a clearly panicked and defensive tone and went on to directly question the intentions of both Mudahar and Carl. And that's on me completely and I will own up to that. Um, but you know, again, it doesn't f matter. You guys are gonna say what you're gonna say and I can't stop it. Which Mudahar in turn openly took offense to. Now I think it's quite interesting to almost make it sound like this is about to be some crazy drama story when in reality, this isn't some tabloid journalism we go for. I kind of find a weird insinuation of that a little bit insulting for me and my colleagues like Carl who do deep dives and investigative pieces on situations like this. And the main point that Mudahar makes is that Gerard expresses concern towards the public's perception of his actions. I'm, I literally am, am, am about to like donate all this money today. And, and, and prior to that earlier this week and the week before, and I've just been sitting here crippled trying to figure out the best way to handle this because I felt like if I donated the money, the minute you guys emailed me, it'd be a situation of, well, he's trying to hide it and he's admitting guilt by doing that. And I never felt that way, but I understand completely that you guys could easily argue that and it would just, make me look more like a scumbag. When the focus should be on the net outcome. Now again, Gerard will tell us, how do you make this right? And again, instead of worrying about how the internet perceives you after watching this video or this news story, you should just donate the money to the charities that you've said. And while a lot of this initial story is hard to make sense of, especially in terms of wrongdoing, there are already a couple of areas that are questionable at best. Beyond what I mentioned about inflation, it seems that Gerard was knowingly engaging in deceptive behavior for at least a year. See, Gerard had stated that his charity's lack of, well, charity was brought to his attention in 2022. I was made aware in 2021 where the, the, the money hadn't moved yet. And that's what made me go, that's not cool. And that's what I got personally involved to move in. Which, okay, would put him in the clear for most of this timeline. Except Indyland 2023 went on like nothing was wrong. Gerard was using the same language to suggest where the money was going without any mention of the issues that he knew about at this point. And he was still making the same statements as recently as November of 2023. Everything on stream today, whether you're donating bits or subs or donations towards any goals via the Tiltify account, if you buy a t-shirt, anything like that, all the money goes towards uh, dementia research. Um, we take, we make none of it, it all goes for the good cause. Like there's only so much benefit of the doubt that can be afforded after over a year of Gerard publicly lying about charitable donations. There's also the fact that Gerard had previously implied that he and his company were footing the cost for events like IndyLand. So for those of you guys who don't know, we had a show last year um, and it, it, it went great, but it was very expensive and we, TOBG covered the cost of it, but we, we have kind of a rule of like, we want to make sure that like, as we do charity events that we're not costing the charity organization or really anyone outside of our, our, our awesome sponsors. The guys at FlyQuest have been so supportive. Um, we want to make sure that the money that we do raise actually goes to charity and, and is spent properly. But with his eventual response, Gerard stated that he had been reimbursing himself for these expenses each year. We paid for flights, hotels, appearance fees, supplies, food and catering, cost of good for merchandise, etc. All of that totaled just under $12,000. Income from Twitch subscriptions and bits, along with merchandise, have offset some of the production costs. Like most of this stuff is understandable to some degree, but then what was the need to lie about any of this? Like as you're going to see, none of Gerard's actions make any sense. Now in the immediate aftermath of these two videos, we heard nothing. I mean, some creators were quick to speak out in support of Gerard based on their positive experiences with him, but nothing from Gerard himself. And Exerto, an online gaming news publication, made the incredibly inflammatory statement that Gerard was accused of pocketing this money, which even Mudahar clarified was never anyone's accusation. Under this post from Dexerto was mine and Carl's videos. Now, nowhere in our videos did we ever say that the money was being pocketed. The money just existed in the bank accounts for the charity as according to the filing. Dexerto made a pretty shitty headline. Now in Dexerto's credit, 
They removed this, amended it, and even one of their heads contacted me and told me they f***ed up. But as far as Gerard goes, we heard nothing for about a month. And during the silence, both Carl and Mudahar ended up making additional videos as they continued their investigation, with Carl initially uploading one additional video and Mudahar releasing three more. In Mudahar's case, his first response was mostly responding to criticisms he faced for his coverage while explaining certain discoveries that he and Carl have made in greater detail. Though one detail in particular ended up being so important that almost everything in the situation now revolves around it, which is the idea of restricted donations. See, Gerard had stated that he didn't want the money he raised to just go to administrative costs or salaries, but directly to research. I don't want it to go to some some doctor's salary or, or, or some expense bill for a, a massive organization. Now, in many cases, smaller donations are unrestricted, meaning that where those donations go isn't closely tracked or decided by the donor. On the other hand, making a larger contribution allows the donor greater control over where the money actually goes, aka a restricted donation, which does explain the concept of allowing the money on hand to accumulate, but in no way addresses the lack of transparency in this intention. Even Mudahar repeatedly concedes that this approach wouldn't be problematic if the people donating were informed about the structure. So again, if he was blatantly honest during IndieLand about, yeah, we're not actually donating the money this f***ing year to AFTD and a lot of these organizations, we're just kind of stockpiling this money up so we can make a big restricted donation later, there would be no f***ing story, okay? The whole story exists because people were misled into believing that their money was going year over year to charity when it was really just f***ing sitting in an account. That's the real story right there. And these videos mark where the situation dramatically escalated. For starters, Mudahar and Carl have repeatedly alluded to Gerard committing charity fraud on the basis of this discrepancy. Looking at the definition of charity fraud, fraudulent activity can occur when people make dishonest or inflated claims about how much money they've raised or how much it's helped the cause. And one of the common ways is pretending to be a charity or falsely claiming to be affiliated with a legitimate charity in order to solicit donations. I do think this is illegal and would be considered charity fraud. Generally taking money by dishonest means is considered fraud. You just can't tell people to give you money under a false pretense. And you can't wait 10 years until you're caught before doing something with it either. And Mudahar ends his second video on the topic by directly informing the viewer how to report open hand to the IRS. Now, one of the things that I wanted to make a point of this is, do you want justice to be delivered? So I'm gonna teach you guys how to report this properly. Now, Carl and Mudahar's first follow-up videos focused much more on the other fundraising events supported by open hand, the aforementioned golf tournament. See, throughout their two videos, the two have been pretty in step with one another another, with Carl generally sticking to shorter, more condensed videos and leaving Mudahar to really get into the weeds. Basically, Carl is focusing on presenting the findings of their investigation, while Mudahar is breaking down how they actually arrived at those conclusions step by step. But what did they uncover about the golf tournament? Well, they presented evidence to suggest that the money raised through this event was vanishing, as Open Hand's public tax filings only seem to reflect the income made from IndieLand and no other revenue streams. We already have a total of more than $60,000, and all of that money seems to have vanished. It certainly didn't go to open hand, or at the very least, for some reason, isn't showing up on their filings. All of the filings from 2019 onwards show the same pattern. Almost all of the revenue raised can be attributed to IndyLand, and hardly anything seems to come from the Golf Cup. And overall, their tones escalated rather significantly, with Carl heavily insinuating criminal intent on Gerard's part while widely dismissing the then prevailing defense of him, which was that this was incompetence or negligence. Like, Carl is pretty direct in labeling these actions malicious. I've heard many people say this could just be negligence or ignorance or laziness, but I can assure you this is not the case. This fraudulent activity has been going on for at least 10 years. And the same could be said for Mudahar. For example, he uses pretty severe language to describe Gerard's possible actions. If all the money isn't accounted for in a charity when you are raising money for the charity, the government considers that to be illegal. That can be fraudulent. That could be embezzlement. That could be mishandling of funds, which is a severe illegal no-no. And takes on a more snarky tone overall. Which wouldn't really make a lot of sense, but I'm gonna be charitable, okay? I'm gonna be more charitable than open hand. Yeah, as you can see, just asking questions quickly escalated into accusations of fraud and theft. And yes, it gets even worse. As I mentioned, Gerard initially did not make any kind of statement beyond his initial call with Mudahar and Carl, as well as the Open Hand Foundation sending a letter to them before they went public. Though during this silence, the Open Hand Foundation quietly donated the 600k in question, which does make it seem likely that Gerard didn't want to comment on this until he felt he had done everything possible to show good intent. This led to Mudahar's second follow-up where he breaks down where the money was actually 
actually going. Okay, so somebody's salary is rightfully getting paid. That's how research gets done. So then they got $250,000 for comb stock grants to individuals and families. And celebrates the positives of this development. $600,000 is not a scoffingly low amount of money. That's money that can do some serious life changing. So it's good to see that they've actually donated the cash here. Though it's not without some criticism. For example, Mudhar points out that the money being donated is great, but it doesn't change the fact that Gerard had specifically named certain organizations he was working with in the past. And that's not necessarily where the donations went. There were still multiple other charities that were named that still have to be donated to. And I assume the $600,000 that they're giving obviously isn't the complete amount, should be donated at least hopefully in due time to the other charities that were named too. Remember, donating to charity, in my opinion, isn't enough. You should be donating to the charities you've listed and named. Because remember, if their name was good enough to publicly use, uh, then you should be, you should absolutely ethically donate to them uh, no matter what the amount is, just give money to these charities. Remember, that's what it's all about. He also points out that Gerard saying he doesn't want the donations to go to a doctor's salary makes no sense. As well, doctors have to be paid in order to do research. That's very different from, say, a CEO's salary, which does focus on personal profit. When Gerard was like, I, I want to make sure this money goes to the right place and not to like some doctor's salary, or, you know, by extension, I'm going to assume a researcher's salary as well, because doctors aren't just the only people. There's researchers, there's other people. Obviously, they're going to charge a salary. Nobody works for free. But finally, after a month, Gerard released what he says will be his first and only statement on this matter. And while the initial response to Gerard was pretty positive, that didn't last long. But first, what were the major takeaways of this statement? Well, right off the bat, the video has a tone that's very unlike Gerard. I own up to my part in this but I will not be painted as someone who is a con artist and embezzler. I won't be someone whose name gets tarnished without putting up a fight. Saying that we are fraudsters, that what we are doing is illegal and constitutes charity fraud, that we are using my dead mother's name to potentially embezzle money and steal is categorically false. He's pissed. And regardless of if this is a story of incompetence or malice, it makes sense that he would be. Gerard then lays out his argument for why nothing illegal took place. We're legally obligated to spend money on expenses. With that said, it is perfectly legal to hold donations and in fact is not uncommon for organizations to hold their funds. We can account for every single dollar received and spent in the last nine years. We do not have anything to hide. And due to the overwhelming amount of people who have been instructed to file complaints to the IRS and Department of Justice, we understand an audit may be coming and we welcome it. Our legal and financial teams have assured us that we have done nothing criminally wrong or illegal. Any possible issues in our paperwork can only be described as clerical errors and are easily amendable. Also, none of the money from the Open Hand Foundation has ever funded any of my projects for my company. I want to stress that not a dollar raised from IndieLand and its supporters was ever used on anything to personally benefit me, my family, or any of our companies. We never touched this money nor ever moved it. See, more recently, Gerard made a video where he purchased every single game sold on the 3DS and Wii U eShop, which as you can imagine, was quite an expensive endeavor. And this whole ordeal took 328 days, required 464 eShop cards and cost $22,791. So it wasn't long before people began to speculate that the charity money went towards funding that video, but currently there is nothing to suggest that happened. Though Gerard also owns up to where he went wrong morally, or at least he almost did. Because as Gerard had said himself, this wasn't an issue of legality nearly as much as it was morality. You know, at least legally speaking, everything's above board. And I understand that the, the question isn't so much legality and so much more about morality. This acknowledgement included him apologizing at various points for where his communication was somewhere in the range of unclear or deceptive. I went on record saying where the money was going to and that the Open Hand Foundation had worked with various organizations. At different points, the foundation had been in communication with or considered several of them, but it was not appropriate for me to make such statements when final actions had not yet been taken. He also announced his intention to leave the Open Hand Foundation entirely and forego fundraising events in the future for IndieLand. As the Open Hand Foundation board is currently restructuring, I am taking this time to step away from my role as a board member. I am no longer a part of the Open Hand Foundation. For the foreseeable future, should the event continue, IndieLand will solely be focused on highlighting indie games. 
there will be no charity component. And while some call these actions suspicious if Gerard did nothing malicious, I have to disagree. Look, there are no requirements to being a content creator other than being able to make interesting stuff. That's it. So I don't really know what would qualify Gerard to act as a foundation's board member, and generally, when you show gross incompetence in a position, you're let go from said position. There had also been some discrepancies and confusion over minor elements of the open hands tax filings, which Gerard clarifies. The foundation was now required to operate like a public charity as described in the IRS code for a period of 60 months. However, the foundation was also instructed to continue to file as if it were a private foundation. Only e-file authorization forms that are sent from a certified public accountant for electronic signature. Not only is this legal, but it is the industry standard for filing taxes here in the United States. But Gerard then shows open hostility towards Mudhar and Carl for their coverage of him and even alludes to an upcoming lawsuit. Furthermore, my family and I are in serious conversations with our legal teams regarding next steps as the allegations that have been made have been made with complete disregard for the truth of the matter. These allegations were made by individuals who self-admittedly aren't even financial or legal professionals. These allegations are slanderous, and we believe we're done with selfish intent. And ultimately ends with an explanation for how the Open Hand Foundation received its name in honor of Gerard's late mother. I want to leave you all with how the Open Hand Foundation got its name. My mom always had this saying that she and my dad would share with each other. An open hand is always full meaning the more you give, the more you will receive. Now at first, the reaction to Gerard's response were rather favorable. He didn't lose a ton of subscribers as is generally the case when apology statements are released and initially the like to dislike ratio was strongly in his favor, though that didn't last long. While viewers got a head start in pointing out discrepancies, both Mudahar and Carl later presented them in greater detail. For example, Gerard says in a statement that the money was always supposed to be stockpiled in order to make a restricted donation, yet Gerard initially said he was unaware of this practice until 2022. The Open Hand Foundation raised funds in an unrestricted manner with the intention to restrict a larger donation towards dementia research. Also, Gerard focuses on areas where Mudhar and Carl were mistaken in their coverage, but in general, these errors were rather immaterial, yet were presented as being substantial. For example, the fact that Carl incorrectly states that some of the tax filings were not signed. So Gerard, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry that when discussing your multiple examples of committing charity fraud, I said the open hand tax filings weren't signed. Which like, Okay, what does that have to do with anything? It just felt like a weird attempt to discredit Mudahar and Carl despite the valid concerns they did bring up. And in his most recent video, Carl once again presented evidence that suggests there are donations unaccounted for even if Gerard claims otherwise. He says donations from the golf tournaments carry across into the next year, but that doesn't happen. The money doesn't appear in any of the later years. For example, in 2022, IndyLand raised over $100,000 according to the lead director of IndyLand, Michael Barrett. Jamie Lee Curtis also gave open hand $25,000. Just those two sources alone is already way over the amount of revenue that open hand declared for that year, which was just $117,000. The golf money is gone. Though overall, both Carl and Mudahar have adopted much harsher tones in their videos and beyond, with them now making direct accusations and even remarks about about Gerard's character. I'm going to respond to Gerard and make it clear that he did in fact commit charity fraud. He did in fact embezzle donations and the golf money is in fact still missing. I hate to say this, but it needs to be said. The way Gerard uses his dead mother is sickening. He uses her to try and gain sympathy, he uses her to try to get money, and he uses her as a shield against criticism. It is utterly disgusting. I recently lost my mother too. In fact, I've lost both of my parents. But seeing Gerard use his mother's death as a weapon and a shield is messed up on so many levels that it makes me feel nauseous. He brings her up again multiple times in this video, and every single time was not only unnecessary, it was completely inappropriate and manipulative. You're just a pile of garbage. Gerard said, F you, I've changed my mind. I'm going to spend that money on something that directly benefits myself. This is again textbook charity fraud and is the literal definition of embezzlement. You cannot take Gerard at his word. He has proven to be somebody that is deceptive. You're human. F puff your chest out all you want. But if being the bad guy means putting somebody like you to task and making sure that this donation even happened in the first place and now people who were suffering from Alzheimer's finally have some extra gas in the tank to fight the debilitating condition that they have, then I guess if that makes me the bad guy, God 
I guess I'm the bad guy. And since, associates of Gerard have started to distance themselves or express disappointment, even ones who were initially quick to defend him. Also, his subreddit was set to private, which is always a great sign. And here's the thing, there isn't exactly a tax expert at the forefront of this issue, but as Mudahar points out, the actual finances can be removed entirely and yet you still have a major problem here. Specifically that, yeah, Gerard had misled people about what he intended to do with charitable donations. The whole story exists because people were misled into believing that their money was going year over year to charity when it was really just f***ing sitting in an account. That's the real story right there. And as Carl points out, Gerard doesn't actually admit to knowingly lying, but instead apologizes for how his statements may have been misinterpreted. And he seems to apologize for providing misleading statements, except he doesn't. He apologizes if you felt that you were misled, and he apologizes for making statements that were potentially misleading. I want to apologize to anyone who ever donated over the years who felt they were wronged or led astray by any of this. He briefly touches upon it during this entire response video. And he uses careful words like potentially misleading or I'm sorry you guys were, you guys felt misled. Which yeah, the classic I'm sorry you feel that way is never a great apology. And as of now, the most recent update is that Carl released an excerpt from the original call with Gerard, where he seems to try to guilt Carl and Mudahar into not releasing the story. The last thing I want to do is ruin the legacy of my family, of my mom and her memory especially because this is such a personal thing for the last 25 years of my life. Um, you know, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to be like, do you guys want money to help me hide this? It's not, this is at all. I'm just asking from a humanity perspective of like, if I am the target of this, I have 20 mouths to feed. I have sponsors. I have a business. I'm trying to make video games. I'm trying to get out of content creation so I don't have to worry about YouTube anymore. And, and, do better things in the world. And I just know because of my track record of things like G4 exploding, me being friends with John Tron when he was a racist, uh, you know, I've been a part of like, you know, pro Jared, like pulling one yeah. thread about the charity thing is going to upheave my entire life in a way that scares the living crap out of me. And I don't want to go home tonight and tell everyone, hey, there is a gigantic thing coming to claim my career and you all have to close down and find somewhere else to do. I know this is me to say this. I'm not trying to ask for sympathy or anything, but this kind of stuff, I mean, I've been following your guys' stuff for years. The stuff with Billy Mitchell, Carl, the stuff that you've done Muto with tons of content creators over the years. Like, mm -hmm. there's no nuance to this. People are going to see this and they're going to immediately go, that Gerard guy who's been nice to a bunch of people actually isn't very nice overall. Him. Let's get rid of him. Which I guess brings me to what I think. Being as charitable as possible, Gerard knowingly lied about over half a million dollars in charitable donations for over a year. But what I just can't wrap my head around is if this was malicious, if there was intention to do harm, what was the motive and ultimate goal? Like this is the evil plan we're looking at here. We're gonna collect 600K and hold onto it. And the moment it's called out, we're going to immediately donate that money so the funds have to be ready to move at a moment moment's notice. Yeah, as far as evil plans go, that one's bad. And even Mudahar expresses doubt at the possibility that the donation was made with a loan or any money other than the original donations. One of the actual conspiracies for this is one user writes, they just needed a few weeks to secure a loan or liquidate assets to come up with the money to do this. Now, this is highly illegal if true. And personally, at least personally, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And here's the thing. I can admit that the minutia of the economics is so far beyond what I can wrap my head around, but I'm yet to hear any theory as to what the end goal could have been if this was a sinister plot. And from Gerard's perspective, why not immediately own up to this issue and donate the money in 2022? And even the handling of the donation that was eventually made was incredibly sloppy. Like I've been looking into this for days and I'm just confused. None of this makes any sense, though I'm going to do what never backfires and enter the realm of speculation. I'm curious as to if Gerard is possibly protecting the other members of the foundation considering it's been run by his family. Like maybe 
someone else made this decision, that person is an immediate person and so didn't understand how terrible the ethics of this were, or hell, maybe they were acting maliciously somehow. Gerard found out last year and just put off dealing with this and kept the story going to not throw anyone under the bus in the hopes that he could resolve this in time. Like, I'm at the point where I'm writing fanfiction here because this makes no sense. But even if malice didn't occur, I do think the criticisms of Gerard are valid. He chose to start a foundation that ultimately didn't need to exist. All they did was act as the middleman for money going to where it actually needed to. And even for that argument of restricting the donations, that's absolutely fine, but then it should have been made so abundantly clear that that is the sole thing that justifies your charity's existence. And there should have been a set interval for where the donations can be restricted and thus the funds are released. If it's every 100,000 or even five, cool, just make that clear. But now we're all left asking the same question. If this story had not broke, when would the money have been donated, if ever? Now look, I don't know if these are the actions of a villain or a coward, but either way, they are the actions of Gerard. And for someone known as the completionist, it's a real shame that every step of this seemed to be half-assed. Sorry, I was right there. Bye!